so good as the Twins and the Rays get set to play the third game of this four game weekend series right now split a game apiece. A couple of hot hitters to take a look at in this series. Evan Longoria, a seven game hitting streak. He's home in each of the first two games of this series and right now on pace for a career best in both home runs and extra base hits. The Rays third baseman. On the other side, Joe Maurer, the mainstay here in Minnesota for so many years. The reigning American League player of the week he homered in all three games in a recent road trip to Seattle and no surprise Maurer went to the opposite field for all three home runs. So glad you could join us inside gorgeous target field Aaron Goldsmith alongside Brian Anderson and Brian both these teams struggling out of the gate inconsistent these teams trying to get this month off to a better start. Yeah and for the twins take advantage of the schedule 15 of the next 18 games are here at home at target field and I'm going to tell you something right now this twins team playing very well here much better here than they have been so they need to take advantage of that schedule sometimes some familiarity and some consistency can go a long way to getting things back on track for this team the twins will be banking on that. And they'll certainly have that here over the next three weeks for the Rays winners of the game last night they will be looking to starting pitcher Matt Andres to keep it rolling here this afternoon. Matt Andres has been fantastic for the Rays since coming up on May the 8th and five starts pitching to a 2.36 earned run average he will be a handful for that twins lineup here this afternoon. We take a look at Brad Miller Logan Morris in a couple of hot bats right now for Tampa Bay it's not just Evan Longoria the Rays one of the best home run hitting teams in all of baseball and Brad Miller leading off today for the first time this season and the first time since July of last year he'll be followed by Longoria then Logan Morrison who has completely turned his season around he also has a seven game hitting streak Pierce and then Corey Dickerson getting the start Steven Souza Jr. looking to get things going offensively just batting under 200 over his last 10 games Mikey Botuk is in center field Hank Conger the switch hitting catcher batting eighth and Tim Beckham getting the start today batting ninth at second base as we take a look and the righty Urban Santana. Urban Santana making his 10th start of the season. Not a whole lot to show for it. A 1 in 4 record, a 4.13 earned run average, and kind of indicative of his season was his last outing. That was against the Oakland Athletics. He went seven innings, gave up three earned runs, struck out five in a losing effort. Let's take a look at that Minnesota Twins defense and see how they're going to line up behind Urban here this afternoon. In the outfield left to right, we have Robbie Grossman, Byron Buxton, and Max Kepler. And across that infield third to first, Trevor Plouffe, Eduardo Nunez, Brian Dozier, and Byung-Ho Park with Juan Centeno behind the plate. Now Nunez has been a fantastic surprise in what has otherwise been a disappointing year for the Twins in many ways. But Nunez has taken over the leadoff spot. Now the starting shortstop for the Twins as well, and Paul Molitor very complimentary of to what Nunez has done especially considering the fact that he began the season on the bench. Well Paul Molitor now his second season the Hall of Famer one of the all time great hitters in the game right. Well listen I mean Paul Molitor very frank with us as we sat down and talked to him about this team said that he was a realist he was and I'll tell you he was one heck of a ball player. There is Brad Miller to lead things off batting right now a season high 250. As Santana comes over the first pitch strike. Now the Twins winning last night it was Brad Miller with the go ahead RBI in the eighth inning. Yeah. And he's behind 0 and 2. And I'll tell you what hitters for both teams this afternoon come up to the plate ready to hit because Urban Santana and Matt Andres are going to set the pace. Santana making his 10th start of the season. I the opposite way this will. Give Grossman some exercise, but it stays 0 2. You look at the struggles this year, Brian, for the Twins and their rotation. Last in the American League, 29th in baseball. Only Rocky starters have a higher earned run average. The Twins right now over five and a quarter. And yet Santana, the best of the bunch, at least numerically, an ERA just a little above four. Well, and, and when you're talking about an entire staff where the starting rotation has that kind of an ERA, it puts your team in a hole right out of the gate. Urban Santana like you said he has been the best of the bunch but not a whole lot to show for with just that one win through nine starts. That goes to a ball and two strikes to Miller. The thing I like about Urban Santana he makes things and keeps things very simple. He works quickly. He works with the fastball the slider and the change up and he much like you're going to see with Matt Andres they're in attack mode from pitch one. Santana 33 years old out of the Dominican Republic now in his 12th season of the big leagues an all star back in 08. 
And Miller making him work to begin the ball game today. Two and two. Now the Rays winning last night that snap to season long five game losing streak as we look at this location. Well, this fastball up and away trying to get Brad Miller to chase after it maybe get the call does not happen. There comes a 2 2. Down on strikes. And he was able to come back and get Brad Miller there with the slider, one that he would probably like back, one that Brad Miller would probably like to take another shot at. Just kind of hangs there in the middle of the plate, but that swing just a hair underneath that pitch. Miller made him work for it eight pitches to get that strikeout. As now Santana faces Evan Longoria. Now we were just talking about Longoria Brian hits in 12 of his last 14 including home runs in back to back games. Well listen right now he's got a well defined strike zone he's not chasing and pitches out over the plate he's not missing them either he is crushing the stakes. It's funny historically Longoria had not had great numbers here inside target field just one home run in his first 19 games played at this beautiful ballpark and now home runs both Thursday night and last night as well. Uh, and it doesn't make any sense either because the Rays historically have played very well in this ballpark best record of any ballpark in the American League and usually when the Rays are winning Evan Longoria is involved. Kevin Cash now in his second season. The opposite way Kepler coasting and reaching out to make the catch. I think that ball slicing away a little bit from Max Kepler. You realize how much movement was on it because you're right Aaron it looked like he was coasting and at the last minute needed all of his reach to make that catch. Kepler recently recalled from Triple A Rochester. Getting that jump thinking he's got it under control and then down there by the knees. Santana retires the first two men a strikeout a fly ball out to right now facing Logan Morrison who has come back from the dead Brian. I mean the turnaround for Logan Morrison has been astounding to get that average back up to near 250. I mean he was under 100 for the better part of April almost into May and then really you know, he didn't have an RBI until the middle of May when the team went to Toronto on the road he was able to pick up an RBI in the middle of that series and has not looked back and he's been swinging the bat very well. Little squibber Santana with the bare hand. Long fastball over to first base and the side is retired in order by Santana. We go to the bottom of the first scoreless.
second lineup here today for game three of the series. It's Eduardo Nunez, the shortstop, with an inside the park home run on Thursday night in game one of this series. Joe Maurer, the reigning American League Player of the Week, will DH. Brian Dozier is at second base, trying to turn things around in this young season. Trevor Kluth on the hot corner. Robbie Grossman, a very pleasant surprise for Twins fans, is in left field as Nunez leads off. Facing Matt Andrees. Matt Andrees making his sixth start of the season. He was recalled on May the 8th, and the numbers outstanding 3 0 with a 236. Count levels at 1 and 1. And you got to work. You got to work to get something in between Santana and Andrees because <laughs> they get it and they throw it. Good problem to have. You can see the average now on Nunez 328, fifth in the American League now that he has enough at bats to qualify, and that'll help him out. Third pitch of the at bat. Nunez up the middle for a base hit. Well, let's take a quick look at the Rays defense and see how it's going to line up here this afternoon behind Matt Andrees in that outfield left to right. We have Corey Dickerson, Mikey Matuk, and Steven Souza Jr. And across the infield, third to first, Evan Longoria, Brad Miller, Tim Beckham, and Logan Morrison with Hank Conger behind the plate. Conger and Andrees, a quick chat. Funny how things worked out for Kevin Cash and the Rays this year, not needing a fifth starter for over the first month of the season and into the second month. Listen, th this is a team that had an off day every week for the first seven weeks of the season. In fact, there was one week they had an off day on a Monday and a Thursday. And so they were able, they had that ability to only use four starters, but you're going to pay for that at some point down the road, and that's st <laughs> starting right now for the Rays. So Andres with Triple A Durham to begin the season. There goes Nunez. Miller with the tag, not in time. Tenth steal of the season for Nunez, and right away a runner in scoring position. Well, this has been an issue for the Rays controlling the running game, and, and Hank Conger in particular. Better this year, but Nunez with a good jump comes up throwing and really wasn't close at all. And historically, Conger has not had success controlling the running game. A single has turned into a double, and here is Joe Maurer with an 0 1 count. Uh, and that'll be something to look at all afternoon because, with as much speed as the Twins have sprinkled throughout their lineup, and as quickly as they sent Nunez in this at bat, you know that they part of the game plan is going to be to try and run. Mauer batting 277 on the season. The opposite way. Well, in front of Dickerson, and Nunez held at third. But we saw the right fielder, Souza, shaded to the gap in right center field, and there's good reason why. Mauer is opposite way all day. Yes, uh, I mean, Joe Mauer has that inside out approach. You know, balls that are middle in, he'll turn on them occasionally, but he likes to stay up the middle. This is a breaking ball. Look how he stays inside of it, head down, and just shoots that ball into left field. So proficient at that, and so hot right now. And some trouble here for the Rays already here in the first. Runners out of the corners. It was Nunez who got things going with the single up the middle. It brings in Brian Dozier. An all-star second baseman last year, 28 home runs a season ago for the Twins, their leadoff man. He's been taken out of that spot this year, today batting third. Well, Brian Dozier, a fly ball hitter. Matt Andrees would like nothing more than a ground ball right here and try to get a double play, but with the Rays' defensive shift, that's going to be interesting as they move everybody to the left of second base. You've got Tim Beckham right here, Brad Miller right there, so any kind of a turn Take some nifty footwork. Goes after the 1 0 pitch. Nunez coming down the line. He scores. Throw to first. And it's in time to nap Dozier. But an RBI ground out. And the Twins right away lead things 1 0. Not exactly sure that the Twins envision Brian Dozier driving in a run quite like this. But a ball right off the end of the bat. Absolutely no play to be made at home plate. It's only Hank Conger at first base. He's got to avoid the bat, make the throw. A 
pushes Mauer into second base. So one out and one on. Now facing Trevor Plouffe, the Twins' third baseman. And Dries now 26 years old. He's from Redlands, California, about 60 miles east of L.A., making today just his 14th career start. But have been very successful so far this season. Made his 2016 debut on Mother's Day. Well, he made that out in Orange County against the Angels. Family able to attend through the ball very well. Seven innings, one earned run, picked up a win. Actually, won his first three starts out of the gate for the Rays. It's been almost nothing but quality starts for Andres. And getting deep in the game, something that Kevin Cash and Jim Hickey, the pitching coach, have put an emphasis on for this starting rotation. Got to help out the bullpen a little bit, be a little bit more efficient, and get deep in the game, something Andres has been able to do. And he comes into this ball game averaging just 14 pitches an inning, which is outstanding. About as good as it, about as good as it gets. Uh, it's now one and two on Blue. Yeah, the benchmark is 15, and for a lot of guys, that's even hard to, to make. To be down there at 14, five starts in and it's no fluke because he really doesn't mess around with hitters he attacks tries to put you away early Mauer a single then moved over to second base on the RBI ground out from Dozier tight to the line Longoria gobbles it up and there's out number two Mauer has to stay put. Two down. And that brings in Robbie Grossman. Robbie Grossman up to a fantastic start. Today just his 15th game. Began the season on the Indians AAA roster in Columbus. Looks at strike one. Well, here's the thing: you just never know when opportunity is going to strike. And you know, as we talk to Paul Molitor, and he talks about trying to find the right combination for this ball club, for this lineup. Robbie Grossman off to a tremendous start. We just saw the numbers there, BA. Andres, one of his great strengths this year has been pitching with runners in scoring position. So. Interesting that we see the Twins cash in right away with the runner at third base. Well, you know, and, and those numbers are bound to you come back to the mean at, at some point. But you're right. He's able to bear down, get the ball to the proper spots, and get the kind of contact that he's looking for. Keeping an eye on Bauer. And a 1-2 count to Grossman. I mean, he's pitched, you know, in all those tight situations. You think about runners in scoring position. You think about putting a, gay, putting a guy away when you get two strikes on him. And you think about two outs in an inning. I mean, he's a finisher. He is an absolute finisher. Has made Kevin Cash and Jim Hickey very happy in his first five starts. Two balls and two strikes to Grossman. The story this year for Robbie Grossman, you think about his career, three years with the Astros, hit beneath 250 with Houston, began this season in AAA with the Indians before he opted out of his contract, was acquired by the Twins, went to AAA Rochester for a day before being called up to Minnesota, and has been fantastic for Paul Molitor since coming up here to Target Field. And just think about the difficulty of fitting in in different clubhouses. You know, bouncing around like that, and all of a sudden, like you said, you're in Rochester for a day, then you're in the big leagues, new teammates, a whole new environment and atmosphere, manager, culture, uniform, the whole thing, and he's just come out <laughs> swinging. Acting like he may like it here. Signed by the Twins less than a month ago. The 2 2 from Andres. And he gets him looking. Now Grossman not pleased with it, but a fastball. And that will leave Mauer at second. A run in. Twins lead 1 0.
Given Urban Santana a run of support as we start at the top of the second. Santana worked his way through the Rays top three hitters fairly easily in the first. And it's Steve Pierce to look at ball one. Now Pierce back in the lineup for the first time in a little while. His first start of the month. He's been out at least relegated to pinch hitting because of some elbow tendonitis. So Kevin Cash happy to have him back and at least healthy enough to get in the starting lineup. Well Steve Pierce has been you know one of those hitters for the Rays that early on a lot of time against left handed pitching getting more as he's been productive and the Rays looking for more offense seeing time against righties now and he's a guy that's a real spark plug for this team plays the game hard plays the game the right way and Kevin Cash picking his spots to make sure he keeps him in that lineup and keeps him active. And that majority of that damage done against lefties but even the right handers holding his own. Goes around to make it one and two. And you worry about the elbow on swings like that. An awkward swing by Steve Pierce. Santana with one strikeout looking for his second. There comes his one two. And he gets it. Hey, B.A., how about a look at your keys for the game for this one today? Well, you know what? Let's take a look at the keys of the game for the Minnesota Twins. Uh, actually, we'll start with the Tampa Bay Rays. Situational hitting. This is an area that Kevin Cash wants this team to get better at. He feels that they've become far too reliant on the long ball, third in the American League in home runs, but a better job of moving guys, putting the ball in play, putting pressure on a defense has been an emphasis here really the last week for Kevin Cash and the Rays. And for the Minnesota Twins in their lineup, it's find the right combination. This is the 55th game of the season for the Twins and they have used 51 different lineups so Paul Molitor still trying to find the right combination especially with Miguel Sano out with the hamstring. First pitch misses to Dickerson. Now you mentioned the home runs and the strikeouts for the Rays and Kevin Cash's thoughts of that it sounds as though B.A. A recent sweep in Kansas City really opened up some Rays eyes. Well you know the Kansas City Royals they put pressure on you all the time. You know they don't walk a lot. They don't strike out a lot. They don't hit a lot of home runs. But what they do is they're very aggressive. They put the ball in play. They put a lot of pressure on the defense. And there were a couple of games in that series where there were not hard hit balls. But they were finding holes. They continue to move runners. They, they just really open the eyes to these Rays on especially Kevin Cash saying hey we got to do a better job of you know run around second nobody out let's move him to third let's get him in instead of taking a couple of strikeouts and then he's left stranded and the Rays have have not been very good actually both of these teams their batting average with running and sc runners in scoring position very very low and the Rays with the fewest opportunities with runners in scoring up scoring position well, Kevin Cash was very outspoken about it and so was Chris Archer who faced Kansas City and his post game comments basically said along the lines B.A. that the Rays could learn a thing or two and let's face it there are a lot of teams who could for the Royals the energy level first of all that that team brings the the energy each and every inning and they're relentless and they keep pressure on and pressure you keep it on long enough and it will you'll break through and that's what they did and I think it really opened the eyes of the, the Tampa Bay Rays the players and the staff on what kind of team they want to be. Steven Souza Jr. on deck. How impressive that the Royals in first place in the central despite a number of injuries early on this season including losing Moustakas for the whole year. Off the mound and behind second. Nunez with a sling on to first. Now number two. Defensive positioning. I mean that used to be something off the bat that you just assumed a ground ball hard hit up the middle for a base hit but now with all of these shades and shifts you start to take those hits away and that seems to be the hit that has been erased more than anything else. There's no question about it because whether you're in a full shift or just a shade you're going to have that shortstop second baseman around second base somewhere in the vicinity so those hard hit balls up the middle they got a chance to make a play on never never had that before got by the pitcher was a hit. Sousa looks at strike one. Sousa trying to turn things around a little bit. Just one extra base hit his last 10 games with 17 punch outs. Hey, hey, hey. An appeal he does not go. As Will Little, our first base umpire today. And in talking with Kevin Cash, he said he wanted to see Steven Sousa Jr. continue to be aggressive. 
cut the swings loose. One and two. Now Sousa at one time a Washington National. In fact, his final act in a Nationals uniform was that miraculous catch in game 162 a couple of seasons ago to secure Jordan Zimmerman's no hitter against Miami. And then dealt to Tampa Bay. Strike three call, a fastball that ran in on him. And Santana has sat down in the first six. Twins with an early one nothing lead as we open up the bottom of the second. It'll be Young Ho Park to lead off. And Dries comes home missing up high. Park, 29 years old from South Korea, his first year in the majors. Signed this offseason by the Twins. Had some prolific home run seasons in Korea. Four straight 30 plus homer years in Korea, including. Back to back 50 plus homers each of the last two years. He's behind one and two. I mean, that impressive numbers really at any level. You know, as he makes the transition now here to Major League Baseball, maybe a little bit more velocity than he was used to seeing in South Korea, still making that transition. Sometimes gets caught a little bit in between. But when you put up the kind of numbers that he has, he will adapt and he will be one of those threats that you make a mistake out over the plate and he'll make you pay in a big way. The 2 2. So Park with nine home runs on the season. It's been a while since his last, but VA, take a look at this one. Mid April against the Angels, and this was crushed. I mean, dead center field, the reaction of Joe Smith told you everything that you needed to know. Didn't even think about turning around because that ball was absolutely obliterated. Now that was a huge series for the Twins. They began the season 0-9 before sweeping the Angels here at home. And you thought that the Twins were really going to show some signs of turning things around, but have regressed some since that sweep of the Angels as Park is down on strikes. 
Well, climb the ladder a little bit when you have a hitter at the plate that has a tendency to get caught in between the fastball and the breaking ball. You're going to go heater late. You're going to go heater up. And this one running in and right over the swing, just a barely a foul tip into the glove of Hank Conger. That brings in Max Kepler. He was recalled recently when Miguel Sano was placed on the disabled due to the hamstring injury. Suffered that back in Oakland. Right as Sano looked like he was beginning to really heat up for the Twins. Well, a team that's looking to get back on track, and you have Miguel Sano go down, who leads the team in home runs, runs batted in, and runs. And that's a tough ask. But Max Kepler up here, you know, he's got deceiving speed. Can run a little bit. Something they said about UBA, deceiving speed. Well, I, I got the pinch run every now and then <laughs> nationally. <laughs> Didn't want to waste anybody with real speed, so they would use the deceiving speed to pinch run. Do it one. That was the best part of playing in the National League, the opportunity to wear spikes every single day of the week. I can tell you enjoyed that. I did. Out to center field, but playable. Hot took. And the gap for round number two. First two men sat down. Well, in two weeks, the greatest golfers in the world converge on the historic Oakmont Country Club for the 116th U.S. Open Championship. Live coverage begins Thursday, June 16th on FS1 and continues through the final round on Sunday, June 19th on Fox. Or you can watch the entire tournament live on Fox Sports Go. Two up, two down from Andres, now facing Centeno, the catcher, who has a hit in each of his last three starts. Kurt Suzuki getting the day off. Now we saw Matuk in center field, Brian, and needless to say, one of the biggest losses to any team this season. Kevin Kiermeyer gone for about six to eight weeks or so for the Rays because of a fractured left hand. I mean it's a terrible blow for this team and you know he, he's a guy that brings a ton of energy each and every day his defense best defender in the game. I mean he gets to balls you just can't imagine the, the amount of ground that he covers and you know like I said the energy that he brings the energy coming out of the batter's box the guy you never has a bad day plays the game hard plays the game well and when we asked Kevin Cash about that when you asked him is there a direct correlation. Absolute. The look that he gave. Oh, he gave a fantastic look. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> of course there is. Brings so much to the table, so many intangibles on top of the fact that he's a heck of a player. Forget the gold glove. He won the platinum glove for the league's best defender. The 0-2 to Centeno makes it one and two. Well, such an important position to think about Kevin Kiermeyer in center field. You think about Logan Forsythe at second base, up the middle defense, up the middle production. Well, some very key injuries. You look at the big three here. You mentioned Forsythe hit by a pitch in Seattle in the early part of the season. Expected to be back around June, and then we already mentioned Kiermaier. How about Brad Boxberger? You got a feel for Brad Boxberger. You know, he hurts himself coming out of spring training, misses the first couple of months of the season, and then he comes back and 16 pitches into an outing, he hurts the oblique and has to leave again. And, and who knows how long that turns out to be that, that he misses, but you've got a really feel for Brad Boxberger. This is a guy who led the American League in saves last year with 41. A huge loss. Both these teams without their closer right now, at least their projected opening day closer, both on the disabled list. Off speed pitch gets Centeno looking, and Andres picks up his third strikeout.
It all starts here, the 2016 Major League Baseball Draft. Coverage begins at 6 p.m. Eastern Thursday on MLB Network and MLB.com. Phillies will have the number one pick. The Reds and the Braves to follow. This is Machuk leading off the top of the third inning. What a start it has been in the first two innings VA for Urban Santana. He struck out three of the first six, six hitters that he's faced. What I like about what he's doing here this afternoon it all starts with fastball command. I mean he is commanding that ball on both sides of the plate. He's throwing with conviction and so often when you do that the secondary pitches will fall in line and that's exactly what's been, happened with that slider. You know he threw that one little bit of a hanger to Brad Miller to pick up a strikeout but since then he has kept that pitch out of the middle of the plate. Off the hands and foul. And that's what I'm talking about. That that fastball right there. They want that fastball in. You, you see a lot of right-handed pitchers trying to go in on a right-handed hitter, and they don't get it there. Almost afraid to hit the guy, but he's been able to execute that pitch. That opens up the outer half. Get some swing and fourth strikeout. That, that's it right there. Yeah, just a perfect setup right there. The fastball up and in. Go to the slider down and away and pick up another strikeout. And, and here's Urban Santana. We're two and a third innings into this ball game. That was the one slider he'd probably like to have back. He's still got a strikeout out of it. Great depth on the one to Steve Pierce. Fastball gets Steven Sousa Jr. looking. And then after a fastball up and in, how about that slider to put Mikey Matsuk away? Very sharp. First pitch to Hank Conger, clubbed high right field of the big wall. Kepler will only watch it go. Conger's second home run of the season. He jumps out of the first pitch, and we are all tied up. Like I said, Aaron, very sharp. <laughs> the one mistake he makes with the fastball, Hank Conger, a very good fastball hitter, and he sees a pitcher out there commanding that pitch. So you go up. Probably looking for a first pitch heater, something out over the plate. Let's see if he makes a mistake. He did, and he made him pay. Go down and away with that fastball, and he ends up above the belt, middle of the plate. Off the bat of Beckham, playable. Byron Buxton, for round number two. Coming into today, only one team in baseball had a higher percentage of runs scored, Brian, via the home run ball than the Rays, and that's the New York Mets. You can see over 50% of the Rays' runs this year have come leaving the park. Yeah, and when you talk to Kevin Cash about that, his, his reaction is interesting. He's like, well, we love the home run. We love scoring runs. But that kind of percentage is it's just not sustainable to winning games. It'll lead to a lot of games where you score a lot of runs, but it will also lead to, you know, the, the home run. You just cannot keep pounding them out night after night. You run into a dry spell, and if that's the only way that you can score runs, you're going to find yourself in a little bit of a losing streak. One and one to Brad Miller back to the top of the order. Now, before the home run from Conger, Miller really had the best at bat for the Rays first time through. Eight pitches, did strike out. On an off-speed pitch, that made Santana work for it. Like a true leadoff man, show everybody his arsenal on the bench, fight off some pitches. Miller led off quite a bit his rookie season with the Mariners back in 2013. About 70 times he led off, but today leading off for the first time of the season and the first time since July of last year. That may have been the first changeup that we've seen from Urban Santana here this afternoon, and that was a good pitch. Well, Brad Miller, you know, we talk about the turnaround of Logan Morris, and Brad Miller can get in line too. He's been the same kind of guy. Once again, out to Byron Buxton. Easy play here. And that ends the top of the third. A run in. The solo homer from Conger. We're all tied up.
And Conger's second home run of the season has tied this game up as Buxton jumps on the first pitch and yanks it foul. Buxton allowed strike one. And that, if you're uh, Matt Andrees, any pitcher really, you get a shot like that hit off you, that's the mindset. Long strike one. Try to get back to a better spot. Quickly on two. Going to run that ball right away from Byron Buxton. And he's the type of hitter that, as the at bat moves along, he will expand his zone. So I'd expect them to stay off the plate here once again. And he does. Well, Buxton this year on the opening day roster for the Twins for the first time, but then optioned down to Triple A Rochester. When Danny Santana was injured for the second time with his second hamstring injury, Buxton was recalled. Right now, Riding a career best five game hitting streak. And that hitting streak extended last night very early on with this triple, and you love to watch Byron Buxton run. I mean, a long strider. You know, Paul Molitor was talking about the fact that he does not break stride, he just continues on so smooth, didn't even need to slide there. That was a, should have been a stand up triple. What an athlete. They go off the plate again, missing two and two. Buxton leading off the Twins third inning. And play to Miller, a bobble, bare hand recovery, and Buxton is too fast. Well, with Byron Buxton going up the line, there can be no hiccups. He reaches out, pulls that ball with some authority to the left side. Brad Miller ranging to his left. And once this ball is not fielded clean, there's no chance to get him. He does make a nice recovery tracking it down, but forget it with Buxton's speed. That ball was hit hard enough that it hit the heel of Brad Miller's glove, and he was not able to squeeze it into the pocket. Miller's sixth there in his last 15 games. First year now with the Rays. You know, and that was an issue early on. The spring training and something that the Rays, Tom Foley, infield coach and the Rays bench coach, out there working on it with him throughout spring training. Things settled down there for a while, but as you just pointed out recently, it's started to pop up again. Well, that allows a leadoff base runner with tremendous speed. To the top of the order here is Nunez. Who singled and has scored the lone run of the game so far for the Twins? And keep your eye, keep your eye on Buxton. The way they sent Nunez, this game tie again. That's exactly what Andres does. Oh, no. Playing well, catch with Logan Morrison over at first. Paul Molitor sent the message loud and clear early on. You know, Eduardo Nunez base it up the middle, first pitch, he's gone. So anybody that can run, he's going to try and run against this. Battery here of Andreessen and Conner. And I'll tell you something else, Matt Andreessen has had an issue with the bulk. That's another reason to try and push the envelope against Matt Andreessen. He had five balks in the minor leagues before coming up to the Rays. And since he's been with the Rays in the five starts prior to today, three balks tied for the lead in the American League. That's a ton. Well, you see how he, when he comes set, he's got like a little leg kick right there. You make anything of that? The leg kick? I've never seen it before. Not quite like that. And, and that actually is, is quieted down to what it used to be. It almost looked like he came set twice. Like it almost was getting ready to pitch and then come set and then the leg goes up and he delivers to home plate. He's modified that to get it to this point. But you'll see it right here as he comes up. A little tap and then back down. There goes Buxton. And Congress thrown out nearly in time. Second steal today for the Twins. And that's going to be a, an issue here this afternoon with these two out there with Andres and Conger because both of the stolen bases by Nunez and Buxton, you see the jump, they're not even close. I mean, the throw, there's no chance of getting Buxton. In fact, he's the second base before the ball's into the glove of Tim Beckham. Well, Andres made four moves over to first base as Buxton gets his third steal of the year at his first since April his first go around with the twins this year. 
So Andres pitching with a runner behind him for the second time in the first three innings. A bunt. Andres with the bare head has no play as Nunez reaches on a bunt base hit. He's two for two. Well, and I'm going to tell you something. The the route that Nunez took coming out of the batter's box, he was way inside the line in the grass. And as he started to peel back towards first base, when Matt Andres got to that ball, there was no place to throw it except right into his back. Watch Nunez come out of the box. He gets out and around the ball. Now as he heads up the line, where's Matt Andres going to throw this? No. No target. So runners on the corners for the second time already today for the Twins. Nobody out two on for Maurer, who has been one of the best over the course of his career in these situations. All time against the Rays. Nobody better. And, and how impressive are those numbers from all those guys when you think about the pitchers that the Rays have run out You're over right. the course of Maurer's career and everybody else? A team built around pitching historically. One and one. Joe Maurer, one of those hitters, you know, he goes up to the plate with a plan. He's very selective. He has tremendous bat control. And he's a guy that you've got to stay out of patterns with. I mean, you just cannot continue to pitch him the same way or stay on the same side of the plate, or he'll wear you out. Buxton at third, Nunez at first. And he may wear you out anyway. <laughs> Twins a chance to take the lead. Mauer, a six time All Star, three time batting champ. Bale MVP back in 2009 when he slugged nearly 30 home runs, which has not been a part of his game historically, especially here at the new ballpark. And that's what makes it so surprising in his last, what, week and a half, 11 games or so, four of his six home runs on the season. And like you pointed out, all of them to the opposite field. Shows you he's strong enough. That's his swing. And the dirt. And the count goes to three and one on Mauer. Among active hitters in baseball, only Miguel Cabrera better with runners in scoring position than Joe Maurer. Clutch, slow your breathing, have a plan, know what the pitcher is trying to do against you, and then go out there and execute it. There's a lot of guys that go to the plate with a good plan, and two pitches in, that thing is scrapped, and they're swinging at anything. You kick up the rosin bag, <laughs> and they take a hack at it. Nobody out and runners on the corners. There goes Nunez. Bach took. Now to his right. Who's got it? It falls in Dickerson's glove. Buxton easily scores. A sack fly by Maurer. And he drives in the go ahead run. Well, able to get that ball into the outfield in the 3 1 count. I think if you're the Rays, you breathe a little bit easy because that was a bad count in a bad situation. And you got Maurer to fly out. And Rays would like to see a little better communication in the outfield. It really didn't matter because you're not going to throw Buxton out, either one of those guys, Dickerson or Matuk, but you're going to be out there all afternoon. Let's get some communication. Uh, lead off air comes around to score. One out and one on for Brian Dozier. Keeping an eye on Nunez, who already has one steal today. Now Dozier now with hits in eight of nine games since being sat down in a recent road trip at Kansas City. Dozier has looked at the shift almost all season long, if not in basically every at bat this year. Right now batting just 207. Has consistently tried to pull the ball, even with the shift on. And that's a recipe for you know you're, you'll get your occasional home run but your average 
is going to languish because pitchers and scouting reports, they know that that's what you're trying to do. So what are they going to do? They're going to pitch you away all day long. And if they're able to execute their pitches, you're going to hit right into the teeth of that defense each and every time. That's why they've been working with Brian Dozier to try to make him a more complete hitter to use the other side of the field, make that defense have to play more honest. Nunez taken off for the second time at his second steal. That's going to happen all day long. I mean, the, the Minnesota Twins with this combination are just going to continue to run, guys. Anybody that can run will run in this ballgame. And all of these bases have been stolen rather easily. So Nunez with two, Buxton with one earlier in this inning. First three steal game of the season for the Twins. And it's happened here in the third inning. So an RBI chance here for Dozier. Just a little breaking ball misses to make it two and one. Well, Dozier last year a career year, an all-star for a reason, especially his first half. But overall, a season ago, 28 home runs, 77 RBIs, a career high in hits as well. Ever since the All-Star game, though, batting just over 200. And, and there was that pitch, what we were just talking about, this slider that's down and away on the outside corner and that front hip flying open, looking to pull. And that's where the adjustment was made against Brian Dozier. You think about his numbers. In the last three seasons, the fly ball rate has gone up. The number of home runs have gone up. And with that, the swing has gotten a little sloppy. And on cue the opposite way, Souza can't get to it. And Nunez easily coming in from second base. Dozier scampers into second with an RBI double. The Twins strike for the second time here in the inning. They lead three to one. How big is the smile right now on Paul Molitor's face? Because that's exactly what he's talking about. Getting down in the count, being able to cover that pitch and go the other way. And look what it gets him. An RBI double into right field. And look at the change up. Almost like a gyro ball kind of spinning down in a way and look at how Brian Dozier cuts down on the swing and goes into right field. That's what Paul Molitor and the twin staff. That's what they're talking about and that was a great job done by the twin second baseman. Dozier now five RBIs his last three games you can see his 10th double of the season. And how tough is that for Souza? He was shifted all the way over to the gap. That's right. And, and, well, and that's because that's the way that he's been swinging the bat. And that's why if Brian Dozier can have that aggressive approach up to two strikes and then a two strike approach where he thinks up the middle the other way and reacts to the ball that's in, then all of a sudden the defense is going to have to play you a little bit more honestly. That right fielder is going to have to move over. It's going to open up more holes for you. But he was able to drop that in there because Souza Jr. They didn't expect him to hit the ball there at all. The 0 1 to Plouffe. You could probably go through the first five starts of the season for Matt Andres, and he has likely pitched with no more base runners in scoring position than he already has in this game today. No question about it. Twins have been very aggressive on the base pads. You know, the, those singles, they they become doubles. I mean, that, that's been the real issue here is you've had a couple, you know, balls hit out there for extra bases, but then you've had guys on first, three stolen bases. That's three more runners in scoring position. You create enough opportunities, you will start to come through. That's what the Twins have done building this lead. Two and two to Ploof. You know, VA, we were talking about Andres averaging just 14 pitches per inning, and look what he's had to struggle through so far today. They're making him work, and putting base runners on, stealing bases. He's been pitching out of the stretch for the majority of the game, starting with the leadoff single to Eduardo Nunez to lead off the bottom half of the first. Still two and two to Plouffe. 
And really, when you look at the number of pitches, the number of pitches is one thing. The, the situations that you're throwing them in, it makes it a little different. Sometimes there's an easy 57 pitches, and other times there's a two plus innings, 57, 58 pitches, where you're really having to work very, very hard. That gets back to stress pitches. Yes. A lot of runners in scoring positions, a lot of high leverage situations early. It takes a toll. Those are the run scoring doubled into right field at second base. He has made this a 3 1 Twins lead. Bloof on a line to left. Dickerson is able to make the catch. Those are back in time. Out number two on a line. Boy, what a play by Corey Dickerson out there in left field. You know, Kevin Cash getting him more time in the outfield. That's translated to better numbers at the plate as you keep him involved. Boy, he was involved on that play because if that ball gets by him, that's big, big trouble. Two outs keeps Dozier put, and it brings in Robbie Grossman, who struck out looking on a fastball that he was not pleased with to end the first inning. Goes after the first pitch and fouls it back. Twins winning game one of the series Thursday night losing last night to the Rays. Trying to bounce back from a very difficult month of May Minnesota eight and nineteen. In the second month of the season. And really if you look back to last season the Twins. Were in contention for the wild card up to game one sixty one when they were finally eliminated. Two main reason Paul Molitor and the Twins were so good last year. A phenomenal month of May last season. 20 and 7 in May, and also they were tremendous at home as well. Well, that's what they're hoping for right now. 15 of their next 18 games, counting this one, are here at Target Field. Hot took to the alleyway for out number three. A couple of runs in, a couple of steals for the Twins, who lead it by two. Driven in two of the Twins, three runs. And they lead it by a couple. We start at the top of the fourth. Santana facing Longoria. Longoria, good numbers against Santana in his career. Seven for 18, a couple of home runs. Looking for his first hit today to extend a seven game hitting streak. Almost loses his balance. I think an aggressive swing like that. Evan Longoria, that seven-game hitting streak, I mean, those are 
Big numbers, gaudy numbers. Three home runs, 10 runs driven in. He just has not missed too many pitches that have caught a lot of the plate. That catches his foot. And that, yeah, that pitch, he tried to hammer that thing and right. It's not been a clean at bat here for Evan Longoria. The ball, the bat coming loose in the first swing, and then this one hammers right off the inside of that left foot. Thank goodness for that padding, and I don't think it made a much of a difference when you see the reaction of Evan. Goria has homered in each of the first two games of this series. Since it's high the opposite way, Dozier now peels away for Kepler at number one. Let's go back to LA. Let's check in with KB. What's going on with the Cubs, Kevin? Yeah, that's terrifying. This is a colossal season for Chicago. I, I mean, when you look at that lineup, top to bottom, and the production from A to Z, and then the pitching staff on top of it, the depth in the organization, they are right now running away with things. Here's Logan Morrison with one out. The opposite way, and it dunks in there for a base hit. So Logan Morrison continues his now eight-game hitting streak. Tell you, Logan Morrison, since the middle of May, the leading hitter in Major League Baseball, up around a 470 average, using the whole field, taking advantage of a rare mistake here by Santana. Connor took one out of the park. Morrison slaps one into left field. Rays bring the tie and run to the plate. Steve Pierce, who struck out to begin the second inning. Pierce has excelled in the cleanup spot this year for Kevin Cash batting well over 300 with seven of his eight home runs in the number four spot and he's ahead of the count two and nothing you talk about the home runs this year for the Rays and one of the numbers that really stands out B.A. is the fact that Longoria is the only Rays hitter with double digit homers. I mean, it's spread top to bottom. Yeah. Well, they've got eight guys that have five home runs or more. They've got 11 different guys that have driven at least 10 runs in. And, you know, that was by design. Hard hit and through. Pass Plouffe. Orson into second base. So with two, with one out, rather, the Rays have runners at first and second. You know, nice inning being put together here by the Rays as they look to answer the Twins. A couple of base hits and a chance here. This ball again leaking back to the middle. We've not seen that from Urban Santana. Those fastballs have been getting to the corners he wants them. The three that he has missed out over the plate with, three hits. Well, Santana faced just one over the minimum the first three innings. He struck out four. Now facing the order the second time through, looking at Corey Dickerson. Oaken bat, slow dribbler to Nunez, to Dozier. Does he stay on the back? He does. He gets the out. Well, and I'll tell you what, Kevin Cash just popped out of the dugout because they're going to want to take a look at that. Awkward play there as Nunez tries to get that ball to Dozier to take advantage of getting the leadoff man in Steve Pierce. Everybody on the phone. Part of the game now. It's, it is. It, it, it's such a part of the game. There's the feed right into the gut of Brian Dozier. Control the baseball with the foot on the bag. Let's see. Let's play ball. So Pierce cut down at second base. Two outs, runners on the corners. And a pitch in the dirt to Steven Souza Jr. Now Sousa struck out looking on a fastball back at the second. And 
he's ahead two and nothing. Now Sousa coming to the plate here with the tying run at first base. He's the go ahead. And he's had some pop this year, nine home runs. And a bit of a slump right now, however. Well, when you're in a slump like this, you hope to get into a count, a 2 0, a 2 1 count, where maybe you can start to eliminate pitches and get back to being aggressive. Because when Steven Souza Jr. is aggressive, making hard contact, that ball will jump off his bat. Creates a tremendous amount of leverage. Tall, lanky, very strong hands and wrists. He's got Morrison at third base and Dickerson, the fielder's choice, at first. Two and two. Santana gave up the home run to Conger back in the third inning. We take a look at Lomo. So Santana has now given up a home run in each of his last four starts. Clobbered high left field and a three run homer by Steven Souza Jr. which is destroyed. That was match number 10 of the season for the Rays right fielder. He has given Tampa Bay the lead. That's that jump off the bat power that you're talking about. A slider that stayed out over the plate and that was a no doubter an absolute laser into the second deck here at target field. That's how you break out of the slope. First pitch strike to Matuk. First home run since the 23rd of last month. Dozier can't handle it. It's a roll to Buxton. And Matuk extends the top of the fourth. Well, Irvin Santana is going to try to come with the breaking ball here to Sousa Jr. Look at how that ball stays in the middle of the plate. It's got a little bit of depth to it, but it's not away where he wanted it. It stays in the middle. Sousa Jr. gets out around underneath and hammers it home. Now, no surprise, all four runs by the Rays today coming on two homers. Only the Mariners now with more. It was Conger with the solo shot back in the third that tied the game up at one apiece. The Twins got two runs at the bottom of the third, and now the Rays have come storming back. Mott took taken off easily into second base. Well, things getting sloppy here for the Twins in the top half of the fourth inning. The command for Irvin Santana, which was so very good, save for one pitch in the first three innings, have been, has been elusive here. Balls out over the plate, bad counts, that ball in the dirt. Now the Twins have led baseball basically all season in wild pitches. And it seems like more times than not for Minnesota this year, wild pitches have led to runs. Two and two. Well, you figure wherever you are with a wild pitch, you have put yourself in the scoring position, either at second or from second to third. You go from second to third, maybe then all it takes is a ground ball, a fly ball to the outfield to get you in. Conger, the seventh batter Santana's facing here in this fourth inning. Conger can reach Beckham is on deck. A flare the opposite way. Grossman chasing a foul ball. Now 
Conger's first at bat and came in the third inning. Didn't waste any time, Brian. First pitch. No, he didn't. This ball, middle of the plate, above the belt, between the belt and the letters, and it is hammered by Hank Conger. That would give the Rays their first run of the ball game. That home run ties things up. The Sousa Jr. home run gives the Rays the lead. Three run shot from Sousa with two outs. Just gets a piece and Tenno can't hold on. Oh boy, that was so close too. I mean, that ball looked like it was foul tick and Centeno able to corral it. And as he reaches the glove up to show Angel Hernandez, he's got it there. Okay, here it is. End of the inning. Got it. No, we don't. <laughs> Works his way out as he's trying to show him. And a walk to Conger reaches for the second time. This will be at least an eight batter fourth inning for the race. First walk for Santana today. Mott took single to advance the second on the wild foot pitch. He stays put. He's gotten a little out of control here, and it's been the command. He's had very good command the first three outside of the pitch to Conger, but it's gotten a little loose here in the fourth. This is where you got to tell yourself, though, hey, listen, this is still just a four to three game. A very discouraging inning, but you've got to stay strong mentally. And the dirt for ball one to Beckham. You got to tell yourself, you know, maybe you're going to have to win a seven to six game, eight to seven game. You need to continue to compete. Two on and two out. Able to get a strike to make it one and one. Beckham getting the start today at second base for the Rays. Off the hands, a little looper. And right there to Dozier. Three runs on one swing. Steven Souza Jr.'s 10th of the year. Had just one extra base hit his last 10 games entered today. He mashed a second deck three run homer in the top of this fourth inning that has given the Rays a one run advantage as Andres faces Byung Ho Park to lead off Twins fourth. 
Big inning here for Matt Andrees to put up a zero. His offense answered and then some. You want to go out and have a clean inning. Well, Park got up to such a fantastic start this year, his first time around in the major leagues. First month and a half of this season, an OPS of nearly nine and a quarter. But batting under 150 without a home run. His last 14, as this is shot down by the pole. You know, and how often do you see that? You know, Young Ho Park, new to Major League Baseball, so it takes a turn through the league before they figure out, okay, these are the areas of weakness where we can exploit. Pitchers make the adjustment, and now it's up to Park to make a corresponding adjustment. That's why getting to the big leagues, you know, very difficult. One of the most difficult things in the world to do. Staying in the big leagues, even more so, because it's just a constant game of adjustments. The book gets made on you, that's for sure. That's absolutely right. No secrets anymore. And that low batting average recently for Park includes a much needed three hit performance in game one of the series on Thursday night. Balls for time. Weekly back to Andres for round number one. We take a look at greater coverage of baseball sponsored by T-Mobile and a couple of young stars at shortstop. Xander Bogarts just had his 26 game hitting streak snap the second longest of the season of course behind the man who plays right behind him in center field at Fenway Park Jackie Bradley Jr. And then Corey Seager three bombs and a win over the Braves and the first Dodgers rookie to do it since 59. Two very bright young stars. Hard to think of a time where this game has been littered with better quality young players, Brian. And we just saw a couple of them right there. And and the athletes in the game now. You know, it's such an emphasis being put on that aspect. You know, as, as you continue to work to try to get PEDs out of the game and guys aren't rolling out with 42 home runs at the All-Star break, you start to look at athleticism. And there are tons of athletes littering this game that, oh, by the way, Good baseball players with tremendous skill. Yeah, look no further than center field here at Target Field with Brian Brux Byron Buxton. He was a phenomenal athlete just trying to get it going here at the major league level. Kepler up the middle for a base hit and a one out single. Yeah, Max Kepler, uh, another one of those guys coming out of the box, coming out hot. Mikey Montuk's has got to hustle to that ball and get it because Kepler, I, I, one of those guys that's got deceiving speed. And so on a ground ball like that, he's going to be looking maybe to try to push the envelope, get into scoring position. And the simple fact that he's over there at first base, you got to keep your eye on him once again because the Twins have been running with anybody who can scoop. A ten Twins already with three steals today. That's a season high. Buxton on deck. Centeno at the plate. Jumps on the first one. A slicer into left field. And a foul ball. Uh oh. <laughs> Everybody's okay. Centeno caught looking on a breaking ball his last time up facing Andres. Kepler at first after the single. Keeping an eye on him. This is when you start to think, not if, but when. Paul Molitor has already sent runners three times today. Seen Centeno get the start recently when Santana has been up on the mound. Those two have worked together in three of Santana's last four starts, including today. One out and one on, bottom of the fourth inning. Trying to keep Kepler away from what would be his first major league steal.
you can add about 10 pitches to the pitch count at least B.A. for what Andres has had to do keeping an eye on first base today. Yeah I wonder how that uh, how that's calculated. Yeah, everything else is kept track of. Well, the Rays certainly have something for it right. It's probably two thirds of a pitch. <laughs> Very data driven organization. And it's hard to find one that's not these days. It really has invaded the game and, and started to take things over. And there is just so much information out there. I think the one thing that you've got to watch is, you, as a coach, you know, a hitting coach, a pitching coach, a manager, is how much of this information do I give each guy? Because there's plenty to go around. A pitch out this time. <laughs> and Hank Conger with a running start. Not only a pitch out, but boy, he cleared the other batter's box. He's ready to throw that thing from the grass. It's like running through the pass. Yeah, right? that's exactly right. Watch him get out of there and start to close ground with Andres. <laughs> You're right. That's aggressive. Three and one. Is that even legal? Doesn't that, did, wasn't there a part of that that looked like you're not allowed or supposed to do that? I mean, God bless him for trying. <laughs> that would have been fun if Kepler would have been going. Next pitch will be number 75 for Andres, who has had just one clean inning so far today. The opposite way again, and it drops in for a base hit. Kepler puts on the brakes at second. Centeno's first hit and with one out the twins have stacked a couple of base runners. Yeah, he showed you early in that bat that his ability to be able to shoot the ball the other way and this was a fastball that stayed elevated on the outer half. Actually outer half maybe a little bit over and, and you know what when you think about plate coverage and you see he's close to the plate but that ball because it's elevated even though it's off the plate Centeno is able to reach it poke that thing out into left field. Corey Dickerson's got to get to it. And keep Kepler at second base, which he did, but that's going to bring Jim Hickey to the mound to go over some things here with his pitcher. Well, the best seats at every ballpark for every game. Visit MLB.com slash tickets today. Again, Matt Andres working with twins runners in scoring position. That has been the case in three of the first four innings. The only inning that hasn't happened was his one, two, three second. Buxton climbs in. One out of two on. First pitch fouled away. So Kepler with good speed at second base. He represents the tie and run. And Centeno at first base to go ahead. Buxton reached on the air by Miller at shortstop and scored. That was in the third. And just like his first at bat, he falls behind 0 2. He just got locked up there on that curveball by Matt Andres. You know, he's a guy that from time to time can get overmatched with good breaking balls. So the Rays busy in the bullpen with Tyler Sturdivant. Through the left side. Kepler will be held at third base and the Twins have him loaded. Oh, a nice adjustment made there by Byron Buxton. He had just gotten locked up on a curveball. And this breaking ball by Matt Andres is even better. Further down in the zone. But it's middle of the plate. And Buxton makes the adjustment. Look at him stay right on it and hammer that ball in the hole. Good reach. That ball jumps off the barrel, gets into left field, got out to Corey Dickerson quick enough that he had to keep Kepler at third. But now the bases are juiced. Now for Buxton, only his second hit of the year when falling behind 0 2. He has got him buried easily. Kepler at third. Centeno the man at second base Buxton just reaching with the single. Twins trying to storm back here in the fourth they've got Nunez the leadoff man aboard at the plate rather. 
Nunez two for two. He has scored two of the Twins three runs. Tying run 90 feet from home now. And it's one and one. Man. Couple of hits today. Has lifted his average from 328 to now 335. And it's past Jose Altuve. All star second baseman for the Astros. Boy, and he has really taken to the leadoff spot, too, here in this lineup. He's looking like the Twins All Star this year. To Miller, the scoop, Beckham on the first, and it's in time for the double play, and Andres is able to work out of a one out, bases loaded jam. Brad Miller leads off the Rays top of the fifth inning as Miller started a critical 6 4 3 double play to get Matt Andres out of the bottom of the fourth of the bases loaded. One and one. Now Miller's father, Steve, grew up a Twins fan from Iowa, so Brad Miller grew up in some ways rooting for the Twins. As he puts this in play right back. To Santana. One quick out as Brian would go back to that double play ball started by Brad Miller. Boy, how big was that? Three straight hits by the Twins, load the bases. Nunez reaches out in this ball, hits it right on the ground, and right there, Miller to Beckham over to Morrison. They get him by a step. That flip up there, nice job by Tim Beckham, not to take his eyes off that or expect it anywhere. He's ready for anything. And Matt Andres, you better believe it. He's loving that. Longoria takes ball one. Longoria 0 for 2 has twice flown out to Kepler in right field. Longoria so far this year on pace for career highs in homers and extra base hits. He's on pace right now for 34 home runs this season. Gloria at one point the American League Rookie of the Year and All-Star each of his first three seasons but not since 2010. Yeah. Got 
goes to three and one. High left field. This is hammered up to the second deck. Longoria has homered in three straight games. Every game of this series here in Minneapolis. Number 12 on the season. And Evan Longoria has brought us a run closer to a tie game. Make it 5 3 twins. That was hammered. Every run, Brian, on a homer. Well, listen, Evan Longoria is in one of those streaks. He's known to get on them. If you make a mistake, He's not missing it. He's confident with his swing. His hands have been quick, and boy, has he been productive. That ball, he thought Sousa Jr. got into his. Evan Longoria, maybe a little bit of a one up right there on that blast. That was enormous. Every game of the series, first time since 2013, he's over to three straight. Well, these have not been cheapies for the race. Evan Longoria how quick the hands are that ball meant to be away. Evan doesn't know that he just reacts instinctively and drills this pitch to left field. Wow. This is like the uh, home run derby a couple of years ago when the All-Star game was here. Meanwhile the one one to Logan Morrison. Skipping out to Dozier for routine on number two. Three miles an hour off the bat. 414 feet for Longoria. That's one of those trajectory. You know, 103, but with that kind of up, you mentioned that was a line drive. Uh, Brian, I think it's, it's going launch, north I think it's launch angle. I think launch angle. There you go. The new phrase. Spin rate. To Nunez. Out number three. Three home runs for the Rays, the latest Longoria. has been more impressive than the previous and Longoria the latest in the fifth a solo smash out to the second deck in left field. Rays on top by two Joe Maurer leading off the bottom of the fifth. And the pitch count beginning to get up there for Andres. Well he's had to work yeah, he's been in trouble you think about all the runners in scoring position you think about that last half inning. Bases loaded with one out. 
Ties him up here one and one. Andy Romero, the flamethrower, getting loose. One and two to Maurer. See, all of a sudden now the pitch is moving in on Joe Maurer, trying to tie him up a little bit, knowing up the middle the other way. But if you get it in or in off the plate, it's tough to inside out that baseball. You almost force him to try to pull. And Maurer caught looking. Take a look at our game summary of this one today. Hank Conger. First pitch, second home run of the season. That tied things up and one apiece. Well, the Twins would come right back and answer. Brian Dozier going the other way. Much to the delight of Paul Molitor, give the Twins a three to one lead. Souza Jr. answers right there with a three run blast. Lead back in the favor of the Rays. And Evan Longoria says, why don't I take it out another run? Dozier bunting to the shift and a bare hand throw off target from Longoria. Dozier hustling into second base. Have you seen someone bunt into the shift before, Brian? I have not seen anybody bunt into the shift before. He is, he lays that down, forces Evan Longoria to try to make a play. Yeah, something that you're not going to see very often. But Brian Dozier, you worry about him swinging the bat, hitting the ball out of the ballpark. He lays down a bunt. Evan Longoria, look at how quickly he covered that ground on that bare hand. Got to it in enough time to perhaps make a play. A do or die throw just a little bit wide and off the glove of Logan Morrison and that allows Dozier a quick read right there. He's able to get out to second base. Second error today from the Rays. They both come on the left side of the infield. One out and a runner in scoring position. As Ploof goes into the shift. Longoria cuts it off. Now that's somebody right there that the Twins need to get going and that's Trevor Ploof. Been a little bit of a slide here the last week, week and a half. Two outs, Dozier at second base. And here is Robbie Grossman. Some clouds overhead, but dry so far here from Minneapolis. I just thought the last night's game might be delayed a little bit, but they were able to get it in in time. Grossman the tie and run. Gross been 0 for 2 so far today. He's reached in 13 of his first 14 games in a Twins uniform. Andrews quickly ahead 0 2. Pretty good off speed delivery right there. That change up working its way down in the zone. Robbie Grossman. Anxious to try to drive that run in. Now Andres working with a runner in scoring position for the fourth inning. The Twins today, Brian, four for 11 with runners in scoring position. That's more hits with runners in scoring position against Andres than his first five starts combined. Well, and coming from a team who has not been getting it done in those situations, but today, the four hits, they've been productive. However, they still trail on the scoreboard five to three. Two and two. Category the Twins have struggled in this year. Dozier at second base with two outs. And the 2 2. Got him looking. Grossman caught looking on a fastball for the second time in three at bats.
pitched in trouble in almost each of the first five innings. Now 92 pitches as he's able to work around a runner at second base in the bottom of the fifth. Dickerson leads off the top of the sixth. Looks at a first pitch strike. Dickerson hitless today, although he has scored a run. He's in the midst of a two for 22 slump. And has brought his average beneath 200. As this is rolled to Dozier. Make it two for 23. One out. Well, that was one guy that we were talking with Kevin Cash that he highlighted. We need, we need to get Corey Dickerson going. Said that would give them a little bit more length to their lineup. You think about his power potential. You see the frustration there with the flip of the helmet, but he is a guy that has the potential to break out. He's very streaky, and when he gets going, he'll get extra base hits in bunches. Well, last time Souza was up, he hit a second decker with two men on. That gave the Rays a 4 3 lead. They've since extended it to 5 3. Comes inside. Susan was part of that three team deal with Tampa Bay San Diego and Washington that sent Will Myers to the Padres and that deal has really benefited the Nationals they got Joe Ross young brilliant starter for the Nationals Tyson's younger brother also Trey Turner their shortstop of the future who just recently called up Sousa ahead of the count three and one. Two count his last time up, and then this happened. Well, you got to try to get that breaking ball to the spot you wanted it. You got it down, but you got it down in the middle of the plate. And Susan Jr. was able to get to it, and solid contact with him, and that ball goes. That should be ball four, and everybody realizes now. Angel Hernandez, their home plate umpire, realizing that was a pass to first base, so a one out walk. There it is, in off the plate. Everybody waiting around. Just like, uh, hey, guy, you can take the base. <laughs> it's how bad he wants to hit. You hit a home run, you don't want to walk. One out and one on. Took takes low as Centeno fires down to first base. Now Mott took with a much needed base hit back in the fourth. He was three for 32 since being recalled. Triple A Durham. Santana has coughed up three home runs in this game today. So a couple of steals on the year has been caught twice as well. Santana imposing base stealers just one out of two against him. You know the Minnesota Twins tied for the fewest caught stealings in baseball. But Santana has done a much better job of controlling the running game. As he's gone through his career. Uh Oh look at that. Souza slides it his second and he's safe. Boy, he was caught so far off the bag that Juan Centeno came up firing the park, and Souza Jr. never attempted to head back to first base. He immediately broke for second, and with the long throw to park, there was no way to get him. Watch as he takes off now, stops the throw behind him, and he's gone. Park even went for a, a sweet tag before he looked to throw. You're right. That cost some time. Sure did. Sousa's third steal of the year. And the twins were, Brian, in video replay formation, huddling for the delay, but. Got, will not be looked at. You got to pop out of that dugout right, right now. Hey, ask for a quick time. Got to check on the phone. 
Two balls and a strike to Matuk. Now with a runner in scoring position. Now Santana now at 90 pitches, not happy with that call to ball. Santana was cruising through the first seven batters of this game. Struck out four of the first seven. They gave up the home run to Conger. Still faced just one over the minimum through the first three innings. And then the second time through started to run into some problems. Yeah, that never saw that coming. And it wasn't because the, the Rays had already seen him. I and mean, they may have an idea of what he's going to try and do. And he's had, over the course of his career, 15 starts against the Rays. But it was location and command where the first time through the lineup those first 10 hitters he was on the corners started catching a lot of the plate a lot of pitches like this it's another 90 feet another wild pitch for the Minnesota Twins that's his second today came in with just five on the year has got two so far you talked about earlier how it leads to runs okay you got a one out slider that Centeno is able to block it scoots off to the right but now Souza Junior at third with less than two another prime opportunity to score a run and that's going to force the twins to bring that infield in can't give up any more runs let yep. the Rays keep widening this lead the twins with more wild pitches than anyone in baseball bullpen will start to stir Souza 90 feet from home and the 3 2 to Montuk. Pushes him inside, back to back walks. So Santana, one walk over the first five innings. He has walked two in the span of his first three batters here, the sixth. Now you mentioned the number of starts, Brian, for Santana against the Rays. And his numbers today have lived up to his career numbers. 15 starts, an ERA of 534 against Tampa Bay. Only the Yankees and the Rangers as he struggled more against. Eric Rasmussen now the pitching coach for the Twins out to have a word with Santana. Vote today, vote tomorrow, vote for your 2016 All-Stars today with the East Insurance MLB All-Star Game Ballot. Vote at MLB.com slash vote and catch all the excitement of the 87th MLB All-Star Game presented by MasterCard July 12th live on Fox. It was held here at Target Field just a couple of years ago. First pitch misses to Conger who has homered and walked. One out runners on the corners. And home run back in the third was Congress second of the year. He's got Souza at third, Matuk at first. Well now you go back to the approach that Kevin Cash wants these hitters to take and if you're Hank Conger you're thinking about putting the ball in play moving the baseball because Urban Santana has now put you in a position that he's going for the strikeout that run around third less than two he's got you one and two trying to put you away get you to expand this is to make it two balls and two strikes Santana does not have a strikeout since the third inning. Talking and Boshears warming up. Riding a lefty going for Paul Molitor. Full count. Now Santana pushing 100 pitches now. Beckham on deck.
Hot took back to the back. And we're starting to get some rain here in Minneapolis. Skies opening up a little bit. And a mass exodus as well. Dozier spins on to Nunez to first in time for the double play. Well, exactly what Santana and the Twins needed. The threat is over. We go to the bottom of the sixth. to see it is pouring here in downtown Minneapolis as the grounds crew hard at work and the tarp going on the field as we were scheduled to start the bottom of the sixth inning Rays have scored five runs on three homers one by Stephen Sousa Jr. with two men on and B.A. we were expecting to see Matt Andres who had got back up on the mound with 92 pitches on his pitch count through five innings but at this point with the delay that has now started and the fact that he's at 92 pitches likely Andres done for the day. Well you know what I think it really depends on how long this this rain delay lasts you would think so in theory but you know if this is rather short you may see him go back out there it, teams tend to be very cautious in these types of situations but you know Matt Andres has thrown the ball well and I think that Kevin Cash wanted to squeeze out another couple of outs with him the way that he's used his bullpen Alex Colome in last night's ball game came in for a five out save actually had to face ten hitters in that time frame so the bullpen has been used and we'll see what happens we'll see how long it takes we'll take a look at our game summary here today through the first five and a half innings. And Hank Conger with the race trailing by a run jumped on the first pitch from Santana his second home run of the year that tied it up with one apiece. Not really the only mistake made by Urban Santana in those first three innings and then the Twins answer right back those are going the other way for a double they would score a couple of runs take a three to one lead not for long a two strike blast by Sousa Jr. That's good for three runs it instantly gives the Rays a four to three lead. Let's extend it out there. Evan Longoria taking advantage of another mistake by Urban Santana. And the Rays at that point five to three. Well, no surprise. The Rays have lived by the home run and all five runs coming on homers. And Longoria has homered in every game of this series. As well, that's not as scripted. The home <laughs> runs are, but Evan Longoria, and really you can go back over the last week, he's got his strike zone. You know, when he starts to feel too much responsibility, you'll start to see him expand his strike zone. Right now, it's well defined. He's only swinging at strikes and mistakes. He is pummeling them. Well, Brian already has words with friends queued up on the phone, so we're going to toss <laughs> things over to the studio. And uh, hey, KB, take it away for a while.
here from downtown Minneapolis inside Target Field. The tarp has been lifted. A rain delay of just over an hour as the Raids right now lead five to three. We are about to get underway in the bottom of the sixth inning. Welcome once again, Aaron Goldsmith, alongside Brian Anderson. And Brian, we were asking ourselves the question: Would Matt Andrees go out to pitch the bottom of the sixth? The answer was yes. And then the tarp came on the field. Yeah, right. And you left me with that question: What happens now? And I think it unequivocally we can say <laughs> that Matt Andrees will not be back out on the mound. It looks like it's going to be any Romero, but Matt's night is finished. Uh, it was a surprise in some ways to see him back out there at pitch count, just over 90 pitches. But we'll see different pitches at this point of the game. We take a look at our game summary: What's happened up to this point? And we picked things up when Hank Conger came to the plate. First pitch he saw, he tied it up. Well, you know, fast ball left out over the plate by Irvin Santana the Rays were able to hit that home run tie the ball game at one but the twins they strike right back Ryan Dozier with a tremendous at bat there two strikes gets the ball out in deep into right field twins would have a two run lead at that point but not for long Steven Souza Junior a two strike breaking ball that got crushed that would give the Rays a four to three lead and then just for good measure Evan Longoria gets a fastball that's out over the plate and he launches deep into left field and that would Leave it where it is right now. The Rays with a five to three lead as we head into the home half of the sixth inning. So Matt Andres done after five innings at 92 pitches. He hands things over to the bullpen. It's Eddie Romero, the powerful lefty, one of the top velocities in terms of his fastball, averaging 97 miles an hour. He takes the hill to work the bottom of the sixth inning. He faces first baseman Young Hope Park. Rays leading five to three and we are back underway after somewhat lengthy rain delay and we knew Brian that uh, weather was in the area there was a threat that last night's game we get pushed back a little bit it was able to be played on time and today we started off pretty sunny then the skies opened up pretty quickly. Unfortunate Matt and Reese looking forward to that sixth inning I'm sure this changes the Rays plans and now you've got to cover really you got 12 outs you got the lead right now. You got to get 12 outs and piece it together from your bullpen starting here with any Romero the hard throwing lefty. One and two. Now you look at American League relievers in terms of top velocity and Romero trailing just Araldis Chapman who everybody trails and Danny Duffy. Well, he's a tremendous fastball a slider to go along with it so he's just not a one trick pony although that one trick is pretty good as you see right there at 97 and to be clear that velocity among American League lefties Merrill 25 out of the Dominican Republic Counts still two and two to park. Park 0 for 2 today. He entered this contest this afternoon, having reached in six of his last eight plate appearances. Had three hits Thursday night in game one of the series. The series all tied up one apiece as the skies have opened up once again. So, right as they took the tarp off and the fans got settled in, they're back ducking for cover. Best they can. Again, the 2 2. Out to center field. Matuk. I'm going to go back just a little bit for it for round number one. You know what would be interesting, and this always happens in these rain delays, especially when they get up around that hour mark and then further than that, is do you show up ready to play again? You know, it's one thing to be a pitcher. You're called upon. You go out there and go through, you know, your warm-ups and get ready to come into a game. But for the position players, you know, they've been on high alert all afternoon. And all of a sudden, there's a rain delay. And you start, everything starts to slow down. You wait for the time of game when it's going to start back up. And you got to get yourself ready again, not only physically, but mentally. That's a good point. As Kepler climbs in with one out. Favorite clubhouse rain delay activity, Brian? Oh, I, I mean, the words with friends, right? <laughs> I don't even think they had that when I was playing. I don't think so. One and one. But had they, that would have been top of the list. That would have been top of the list. No, I, I do not partake in that. I, you know, really, for me, it was 
just kind of hanging out if there was another game on, watching that game. I was not a big card player, although that is a, a frequent activity. Guys stay competitive. More activity inside the Rays bullpen. One and two is slow swing and a miss. Well, right there is that breaking ball. When you talk about the velocity that Eddie Romero is able to get with the fastball, but then he's able to come with this, that's where it starts to become unfair. Kepler one for two today, a single up the middle back of the fourth. That time missing with the heat. Ninety seven down to eighty three it gives you a lot to think about and a lot to have to handle the big difference between the two pitches. Conger trying to go after it. And to Logan Morrison's glove not in time. Kepler is able to beat it out. So despite the strikeout Kepler at first base with one down. Talked about it earlier in the game. Max Kepler very surprising how quickly he gets down the first base line. Rays going to take a look at it. I think Kevin Cash is going to ask him to take a look at it on video. Here it is. The swing and a miss. It gets away from Conger right there as he goes up to throw. Gets it. Flips it. I think they may get this one. Rays may get this one overturned. Ball into the glove. Boy, that is close. I think they got him. It I looks think, like it. Yep. That ball into the back of the glove as Kepler's foot was coming down, and the Rays may get this overturned. Actually, should get this overturned. Well, the critical thing to watch is when that ball gets the back of the glove. Yep. Yep. And as we've also learned over the last couple of years with challenges, what it is originally called has such a huge impact because now you have to find evidence to overturn it. And it looks like we did. Originally called safe. Kevin Cash pleading that he is out. They can see Morrison's glove bounce back before that foot comes down. Like a couple of guys looking for some sunglasses as he is out, so that gets overturned. Two down. Kevin Cash wins that one. Welcome to the Midwest. Spring into summer That's right. weather. Rain delay to sunglasses. It has become sunny over at first base. So two up, two down. Bring in Centeno. Montuk will take a pair in center as well. Souza in right. Centeno looks at ball one. For the Twins, we take a look inside their bullpen. They've got activity talking, the right hander beginning to stir. Urban Santana went six innings, gave up three home runs. All five runs for the Rays coming on three long balls. As the count pushes to one and two. Santano now with a hit in each of his last four starts, including today. Conger can't hold on. Andy Romero with that quick pitch again as he comes set and immediately comes to home play. Used to see Joel Peralta do that for the Rays all the time, something that has been picked up on some of the other pitchers around the league, including Romero, but Conger couldn't hold on to it. Another one right there. Hits him with the curveball that time as Centeno is down swinging, and Romero, after the delay, retires to sign an order.
guys away. A 70 minute rain delay and snagging a foul ball. We've got a new pitcher up on the hill. Michael Tonkin taking over for Urban Santana, who wins the first six. Well, he's on for the 24th time. The ERA 2.84, 31 strikeouts and 25 in the third innings. The opponents average 207. Good numbers for Michael Tonkin here for the Minnesota Twins. Look at the starters and how they compared today. Urban Santana, he was sharp early on through the first three innings, but then the command went awry and the home run started to head out of the ballpark. And Matt Andres, he had to battle and battle hard through his five innings of work. And that was the Houdini act a lot of times for Andres. He had just one clean one, two, three inning. But in the other four, he had at least one runner in scoring position every time. Not to mention that bases loaded one out situation where he was able to get a double play ball off the bat of Eduardo Nunez. Tim Beckham leads off the top of the seventh. He's behind 0 2. See Nunez starting shortstop once again, leadoff hitter for the Twins. Hey. Appealed out of first base, he does not go. Back him over two so far today, a fly out and a pop up. For Urban Santana, those five runs, the second most he's allowed in any start this year. Remember, he came into this game with the lowest ERA among all twin starters, which unfortunately for the twins is insane a whole lot. 29th in baseball and rotation ERA. They've been roughed up. That's it. Pitching staff, starting rotation, has led the pitching staff to have. The worst ERA in the American League. They've given up the most home runs in the American League. That was attitude today. And that has got to be one of the biggest differences between the 2015 Twins and the 2016 Twins. For years, their rotation, think of those consecutive 90 loss seasons, the rotation for the Twins was among the worst in the league. Last year, the rotation much, much better. Of course, added Santana despite a PED suspension. He missed the first 80 games. But the rotation has gone back to old form this year. Beckham a leadoff base hit right up the middle. And a single to start up top of the seventh. Tim Beckham able to lay off a couple of sliders off the plate, get a fastball middle, and took it right back up the middle. Tonkin, look out. Right back at you. That one whistling by. Leadoff man aboard, nobody out for Brad Miller. He climbs in for the fourth time. And they got him at first. Beckham picked up. And that wasn't even a good throw over there by Tonka. That's how far Beckham was leaning and got himself way off the bag. Boy, Young Ho Park had to reach for that throw, then get the tag down. But look at look at Beckham. He is caught leaning, trying to get back, and that tag right to the elbow before the hand gets to the back. Good call there by Will Little. So lead off single erased as Miller takes ball one. Heck of not pleased. Miller a standout in college at Clemson. Drafted and developed by the Mariners traded over this offseason in November to the Rays from Windermere Florida so he's close much closer to home these days. Just this high to the alleyway in left center. Grossman running out of room and this is off the wall. Miller has a stand up double. Couple of loud shots here by the Rays to lead off the top of the seventh. You know, Brad Miller, much like Steven Souza Jr., when they connect with the ball solidly, that ball just jumps. And this ball, middle, working its way to the outer portion of the plate, and Brad Miller stays inside it, drives it, and comes that close to getting it out of here. That's a big shot here, too, because that's in between 377 and 411, deep out into left center field. That's a pop. Of course, Beckham back on the pine after getting picked off. 
Little chance for him to try to come around. Longoria digs in 0 1. Mammoth solo home run of the fifth for Longoria has made this a 5 3 Rays lead. Now there's pretty stiff competition, especially this year at third base in the American League for the All Star game. This year held in San Diego. But Longoria playing like an All Star recently has not been back to the Midsummer Classic. Since 2010. Well, he's attempting to make a push. There's no doubt about that. No, no, no. Longoria has now tied his career best with home runs in three straight games. All three games of the series. We take a look at the American League All Star ballot. And, and no surprise, Machado right now, the leading vote getter at third base. Salvador Perez, the leading vote getter overall, over a million. Then David Ortiz. His swan song right now in second place among the votes. I think the biggest surprise is only three Royals. You're right. Buxton tracking it well to the warning track. Miller will tag and scampers to the third base. Two outs and a runner at third for the race. This year it's the Cubs that are pulling the Royals yes. from last year. Yes, they are. The entire infield. Well, you know what? It, can hardly blame them. A lot of excitement in Chicago. We talked about them earlier in this ball game. The record that they have right now, how well they've been playing. And we see the National League All Star game balloting. The entire infield and center field. All Cubs. Harper, the leading vote getter. Part of me, Rizzo, the leading vote getter. Harper right behind him. Oh, and one to Logan Morrison. Now Morrison, a single into left field and scored a run back in the fourth. That extended his hitting streak to eight games. This has been an odd season for Morrison. You look at what he has done recently, he has been the hottest hitter in baseball. Since May 16th, even better than his former teammate Kyle Seeger in Seattle. Oh well, and, and he went into that game hitting 119 with no runs driven in. Oh. That's how dramatic the turnaround has been. Morrison on the second day of May was batting 094. He went his first 29 games this year without an RBI. Hitting in the middle of the lineup. And that's what Kevin Cash, when he was talking about Logan Morrison, said the way that he handled his struggles. He shoots this out to center. Buxton having a turn. Buxton having a look. And Logan Morrison is scalding hot. Wow. The fourth home run for the Rays today. It comes with two outs and Miller aboard at third base. Morrison's fifth of the season. And he has helped to really open this one up in the Rays' favor. Seven to three, Tampa Bay. The, the contact off of Tonkin in this top half of the seventh inning has been loud. Even Longoria's fly ball deep, but a hanging breaking ball. Logan Morrison, full extension. We know how strong he is. And another home run. He knew it when it left the, left the bat. Strike one to Pierce. Well, Morrison is now homered in back to back games. A ninth inning home run last night for Morrison. That was the opposite way. This time he goes dead center. Yeah, yeah. It, Went the corner of the bullpen in last night's game. Dead center in this game, even more impressive. With two outs, a pop up. Bluff calls it off and makes the catch. Four home runs today for the Twins. And that has accounted for all seven runs. That should surprise no one. Logan Morrison, his fifth of the season, a two run blast.
we're underway in the bottom of the sixth. Ball one to Buxton leading things off. Pardon me, bottom of the seventh. And it's one and one. The Angel Hernandez taking full and complete control of this game. Just firing out there. Let's play ball. And reservations. Yeah, reservations. <laughs> Time to go. Manny's is waiting. One and two. A couple of nice breaking balls. Eddie Romero. That's the pitch. That's the separator for him. Hard enough to deal with that 97 mile an hour fastball, but then you get that low to mid 80s breaking ball. And when he has command of that, good luck. For the most part this year, Brian, Romero has been a one inning guy who's being called on here to work multiple times. Well, and that's why we saw Matt Andrees initially before the rain delay go out there for the sixth inning because Kevin Cash hoping for another inning or some more outs from Matt Andrees in, in order to, you know, how to piece together the back end of this bullpen. Typically when the Rays have the lead, you start to think about any Romero, Xavier Cedeno, Alex Colome, Erasmo Ramirez. And Talked about Colome last night. A lot of pitches and extended outing. Erasmo has been used quite a bit. So in piecing this together, he's now working with Romero on a second inning. Breaking ball gets him looking. Buxton back to the dugout. Just can't account for it. So he catches the back door. It's three straight strikeouts. Romero's been roughed up a little bit lately. Last three appearances, five runs all earned, spanning two innings. Looks sharp so far today. As it comes in low to Nunez. If you include today for Nunez, his last 10 games, he has 19 hits. And one of those coming in game one to lead off the bottom of the first. This was Thursday night. And inside the park home run. He's been a pleasant surprise here for the Minnesota Twins. He's taken very well to the leadoff spot. Been very productive. Been a bright spot. No question about it. I don't think anybody would have guessed that the last inside the parker before Nunez was Kurt Suzuki for the Twins. Nobody had Kurt Suzuki. Nobody had that on the short list. No. Twins catcher. This is shot high the opposite way. But Souza is able to track it down. Jumped off the bat of Nunez. Route number two. And we'll go back to game one of the series. Maybe helped out a little bit by the Sun BA. Yeah, you know what? Brandon Geyer had trouble picking that ball up. There was a it was difficult out there. And then as he got back, he kind of drifted on it, jumped up, twisted his body, he was off the heel of the glove. And not only that, it took a terrible bounce for Brandon over into the corner. And Nunez just never let up and made it all the way around. Romero has sat down the first five that he's faced here tonight. Now facing Joe Maurer. Now the way that the sun was shining through that night here at the top of the stadium here at Target Field, down on the, you know, the, the right fielders had to shield their eyes every pitch to try to pick things up off the bat. It was that difficult. One ball and one strike to Maurer with two outs and the base is empty. Maurer a single and an RBI sack flying back in the third. At one point the Twins led this game three to one. The Rays have scored six unanswered runs. On a line out to Souza who was shaded perfectly and is able to make the catch. He was in exactly the right spot to catch that bullet for Maurer.
Six down by Andy Romero out of the bullpen following the rain delay and Matt Andres going five innings. So the bullpen very effective so far today for Kevin Cash as we start at the top of the eighth. Talking back out there was hit hard in the seventh. Was able to fire a first pitch strike to Dickerson. Oh, and two. Well, Tonkin, a former 30th round draft pick back in 2008. Last year, really bounced back and forth between Minnesota and AAA Rochester. In fact, five different stints in the majors with the Twins. But overall, between the minors and the majors last year, a sub two ERA and nearly 60 appearances. Right field that'll lead off base hit for Dickerson. So leadoff man reaches each of the last two innings since the delay facing Tonkin. We take a look at our Budweiser game summary so far, and it's been all about the long ball. No surprise. You see, Souza, Longoria, Morrison was the most recent, and then Nunez for the Twins. Another couple of hits entered today, fifth in the American League in average. Well, he's done his part. Twins took an early lead. The Rays answered. It was back and forth for a while, and now it's just been the Rays adding on all via the long ball. It's been the story of their season and the story of the afternoon. All seven runs. Productive day for Souza so far. Hawkins 0 1. And it makes it 0 2. Probably the two best pitches we've seen Tonkin throw in his outing. Two good fastballs right to the outside corner. Too many of the pitches, whether it's the breaking ball or the fastball, have caught a lot of plate. The Rays have put some good swings on those pitches. Blows it past him at 94. So Souza pretty quickly disposed of one out. Couple of those fastballs on the outside corner, and then Tonkin's gonna go ahead and climb the ladder right here. 94 gets it above the swing of Souza Jr. for the first out. I mentioned the home runs by the Rays today. This is already their fourth game with four home runs. Their season high is five. Last year they had only two games with four homers. You can tell much. Different look to this lineup this year in terms of what they're doing, how they're scoring their runs. But you mentioned earlier in the game, too, the, the depth of the home run threat. So many guys able to hit the ball out of the ballpark. That gives them a, a chance to do it. Well, Longoria, the only man with 10 or more homers. I take that back. Souza hit his 10th today. So you can put two on that list. Off the hands and foul. Morrison going out to straightaway center. He's homer now in back to back games. Entered this series with three homers, now has five of the year. Bot took a walk, a single, and a strikeout today. Taking some time here. Time call. Inside that moves his feet. How did it miss him? That ball arm side run from Tonka just continued to track Mikey Matuk and how he did not get hit by this pitch. Whew.
Now Tonkin has been having a rough go since taking over here in the seventh now in the eighth. Four hits. A warning track out off the bat of Longoria. As the count pushes full. Conger the home run earlier back in the third and his second of the year is on deck. This Rays offense here this afternoon has just not let up. Two different points in the ball game were trailing. Continue to battle. They've scored in four of the seven innings so far. Slicing to Kepler. Able to make a chest eye squeeze and throws a dart back to first to double up Dickerson. That wasn't close. Despite a leadoff single, the side retired in order. World's biggest soccer tournaments featuring some of the most famous stars on the planet. And the action continues tonight as Douglas Costa leads perennial powerhouse Brazil against Ecuador at 10 p.m. Eastern on FS1. The Copa America Centenario is all month long across the networks of Fox Sports, or you can watch the entire tournament on Fox Sports Go and BA. It sounds like that's exactly what you'll be doing. You know what? I will be doing that. And I'll tell you, the United States off to a sluggish start. You know, the, the tournament on their home turf, and they drop a two, two to nothing. Ball game to Columbia, so they've got their work cut out for them. They you're, want to make very it very emotional home. about this. It's it's early, but it's a tough setback. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sturdivant, our new pitcher, time to run for the sixth time. Taking over for any Romero, who was fantastic. Romero, six up, six down, tied a career high with three punch outs. Well, listen, he, he had his stuff working today. You know, the, the, the fastball was there, the slider was there, and that makes all the difference in the world for any Romero. The 0 1 to Dozier. Rule to strike to make it 0 2. Dozier's driven in two of the Twins' three runs today, including an opposite field double with two strikes against him. That have made Paul Molitor happy. There's no doubt about it. That was one of the things that you know he was talking about Brian Dozier and his continuing 
maturation as a hitter sometimes becomes a little too pull conscious, and that's fine. You know, if you're a guy that can hit the ball to the ballpark and you have that up to two strikes, but then that two strike approach to be able to hit the ball the other way, and that's what he did to drive in a run. On a late hop. Beckham able to handle that easily. Say that one got a little too close for comfort. That ball <laughs> hit hard. It got into that midsection. What are you going to do? There's no getting out of the way of that one. Right at him. One out for Blue. Now, Sturdivant, who made his Major League debut near the end of last month, has been very efficient recently in his last three starts, last three outings, rather. No more than 10 pitches to get three outs. Make them count. Parts of seven seasons in the minors. His first six with the Indian system. On roster invitee to spring. And now finds himself up in the big leagues for the first time. A squibber in past first base. Logan Morrison having to run a long way for it over the shift. Ploof going in for second. The tag by Beckham and he's out. What a play. What hustle by Steven Souza Jr. out in right field. Not expecting that ball to be hit there. I'm sure Paul Molitor is waiting for a phone or wait for the phone call to let him know if he should challenge this. But the effort to get there and the spin and the throw, not expecting this, a little cue shot off the end of the bat. Look how far Souza was. Over. Yeah, he's not even in the picture yet. But look at he doesn't even think. Turn and fire. Wow. And Beckham then gets the tag. Let's see, this is going to be close, close, close. I, I don't think that you can overturn that. That's where you were talking about the call on the field sets a high bar. Sets the stage. Have to clear it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you're right, BA. Not only for Sousa to get there, is this. Will not be challenged. Not only for Souza to cover the ground, but then he held onto that ball for a fraction of a second. He never, he knew where second base was. You know, he, from playing right field and where he got over there, here's the tag by Tim Beckham. Able to get it to the right to the belt before that foot came in, but you're right. He just instinctively knows where second base is, did not pick it up with his eyes. He just spun and threw to a spot. Nobody more surprised than Trevor Plouffe. Take a wider look as to where Souza was. And just watch. He does not pick up second base. Get it? Throw it. A great effort. Incredible. Two outs, nobody on. Bozeman fouls it off. Bozeman a rare, rare 0 for 3 so far. He's reached base in 13 of his first 14 games in a Twins uniform. Three and one. And if Grossman can reach, Park is on deck. The series right now tied up a game apiece. Twins winning Thursday in game one. Rays winning last night four to two. A game that was tied in the eighth inning. And a two out walk. So Grossman reaches base. First walk today by the Rays bullpen. That'll bring in Park with two outs. First walk of the season by Sturdivant. Our 
talking earlier about Parks home runs this year he has nine homers that's tied for the American League lead among rookies Nomar Mazzara who has cleaned up shop back to back AL rookie of the month awards April and May also has nine but six of those nine homers for Park came in the first month of the season. Well, that's making making a splash you know typically when you're you get called up to the big leagues from minor leagues or even coming from South Korea like Young Ho Park did. Guys are going to pitch you, you know, according to the book. You know, fastballs down and away, breaking ball off the plate, occasionally stand you up, maybe climb the ladder here or there until they find out what your, you know, what your strengths and weaknesses are. And he took advantage of that. Pop some things out, all of a sudden you start to find where the holes are. Now they're being exploited more and more. Rolls over this to Longoria. Easy throw out of third base. A runner left, and we're through eight innings. We start at the top of the ninth inning and we take a look at our Gatorade Frost pool under pressure as we just saw Evan Longoria has tied a career best home runs in three straight games B.A. every game of the series so far. Well you, you just can't talk enough about what he's been able to do uh, his strike zone discipline he's not chasing balls out over the plate he's not missing they're going for extra bases they're driving runs in they're leaving the yard. Now the one he hit today you can see there second deck crushed that was his 12th of the season Conger leads off the top of the ninth inning facing Buddy Boshears. you get a root for this guy just based on the name <laughs> Buddy <laughs> Boshears. Conger lifts it high to right center Kepler look it up and it's off the wall Nice day for Conger. And if not for that tall wall, would have had a second home run. And getting to hit right handed, which does not happen very often for Hank Conger. He only had three at bats coming into this one from the right side. And guess what? The last one came against Andrew Miller. That's not, hardly fair. Not fair at all. No. He's like, you know what? Let me take advantage of this fastball. A little lift and separate to right center field and up and off the wall. High off the wall. Brings in Tim Beckham. Showing bunts. Looking at a ball. Now Beckham is single back in the seventh, then was picked off at first.
Though she is making just his third relief appearance for the Twins this year. Pitched an inning and two thirds scoreless Tuesday in Oakland. Was pitching in Indy League ball last year in the Atlantic League for the Somerset Patriots. Was the league's reliever of the year, just a one ERA and 54 innings worth of work. Began the season with Triple A Rochester. And for Boshears, his first time back in the big league since 2013 when he was with the Angels. He was roughed up in about 25 games. Well, you got to love the willingness to go to independent baseball. Just not ready to give it up yet. Still feel like you have more to give. Another high slicing. Ball to Kepler in right field. One out. Oh, when you think about guys who spent time in the independent leagues who are making an impact this year, I think a little bit about Rich Hill. Rich oh. Hill, who has been one of the best starting pitchers in the American League this year, signing that one year deal with the A's. Last season, it was pitching on the East Coast in independent league ball. And well, this year, the Red Sox are wishing they had him back in Boston with the way that rotation has been. He's been fantastic. You know, the Rays got a chance to see him last season at, at the end of the year, and he was, I mean, he was just fantastic. He was double digit strikeouts yeah. in four straight starts. He was tremendous. Well deserved, and, and you just love the determination of those guys, just not willing to give it up yet. Grossman, medium depth. Out number two off the bat of Brad Miller. Miller doubled and scored in the seventh, flies out here. We're out number two in the ninth inning. Conger, the wall ball, double stands in scoring position for Evan Longoria. Now for Longoria now an eight game hitting streak as we mentioned he's homered in all three games of this series and tomorrow he'll have a chance to do something he's never done that is homer in four straight games and well, they've seen enough Evan Longoria watch out far off the mark and Conger stays put well and you know what we've heard you, you talk about some of the maybe potential rule changes Ooh. raising the strike zone automatic intentional walk. This is the argument against it. That's a baseball play. And Hank Conger gets a little lax out there, and as that ball bounces away, eh, a little too late now as it tracks over towards third base. But that's the argument against the automatic intentional walk. Well, the next one, not good either. Used to have to practice and work on these at the end of a bullpen session in spring training. Did you really? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you would finish the spring training bullpen, and they would, you know, every now and then, okay, let's work on, maybe that was just me. Maybe they <laughs> thought I was going to be in a lot of trouble, and they didn't want me facing guys. I don't know, but I did. <laughs> He's our intentional walk guy. Glad to have you with us here in the top of the ninth inning. Aaron Goldsmith, Brian Anderson, game three of this series. Twins and Rays from target field. We had a 70 minute rain delay. Just push things back a little bit. First and second for Logan Morrison. Two outs. Morrison with an enormous home run to straightaway center field his last at bat. That was in the seventh. I'm reading 438. That's a shot. I believe that easily. Out to the batter's eye. Yeah. This was just a couple of innings ago. Boy, he was able to catch a hanging slider that he got extension on and lifted that out to center field. Fourth home run of the day for the Rays. Two outs, two on, two strikes to Morrison. And you can see Morrison reach, look up to the skies and give a salute. He does that after every home run. His father, Tom, was a longtime member of the Coast Guard, 25 years. 
and sadly passed away because of lung cancer despite being a non smoker and his father has since been buried at Leavenworth National Cemetery in Kansas where Morrison has roots so after every home run a salute to his past father as Logan is not pleased with the location of that pitch and the call two stranded we go to the bottom of the ninth. Here today for the Rays for the fourth time this year, and a couple of the guys who went deep: Evan Longoria, his 12th; Logan Morrison, a two-run shot in the seventh, his fifth. So Morrison is homered in back-to-back -back games. St. Conger got it all started in the third. Souza, a three-run homer to the second deck and left. Well, that's something that really stands out about the home runs as Kepler leads off the bottom of the ninth. Wins down to their final three outs. None of those home runs were cheapies, Brian. No, 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 no. When you're talking about the guys who hit them, you're talking about Susan Jr. and Evan Longoria, Logan Morrison, when they catch one clean, that is not going to be cheap at all. Keeps his hands in, yanks this down the right field line, but foul. Well, that's the way that the Rays have been swinging the bats this season. They are attacking the baseball. It's led to a high number of strikeouts, no question about it. Kevin Cash would like to see them cut down on that number, especially in situations where moving the baseball moves runners. But you appreciate their aggressiveness, and they hold nothing back. One and two. Well, the Twins are in danger of having their 26th game of the year scoring three runs or fewer. Tough to win. They have won just one of the previous on the season. Matuk has all day. Two outs to go for the Twins. Meanwhile, Sturdivant working over an inning for the first time in his young career. This really helps out Kevin Cash is if, if he's able to close out this game by going to Romero for multiple innings and Sturdivant for multiple innings. Save the rest of the bullpen, keep them fresh for the ball game tomorrow and the rest of the road trip. You know, the Rays are in a you know, a part of their schedule right now where they've got 20 straight games. So the bullpen is going to be taxed and used. You can save some arms. Keep them fresh for the next day, the next couple of days. It's a big lift. Cash, the former big league catcher.
Dickerson chased it after it, but a strike, one and one. Foul ball. It's also nice to have a couple of guys coming out of the bullpen that you know can give you multiple innings. You know, Rasmo Ramirez is a guy that you know can give you, like, just about a week, week and a half ago, he went 54 pitches in and out. Sturdivant working in the second inning. Romero's already given you two. Colome, a five out save last night. Takes him down with it. One and two. That caught him flush. Oh, that's right off the inside of that shin, and there is no protection down there. Last night, 34 pitches for a five out save. He's hanging around just in case. The third time this year that Colome has locked down a save of at least five outs. He's done it now each of the first three months of the season. And last night he had to work. He had to face 10 hitters. Started off by striking out Brian Dozier, finished his outing by getting him to fly out to end the game. The one two. Two outs. Nasty. Nasty finish on that pitch. Whole key to a good finishing pitch, especially off speed. In the zone, presented as a strike. As a strike. Now I start my swing and it bottoms out. Keep it in the strike zone as long as you can. A hitter has to commit with two strikes, and then the ball disappears. Tremendous pitch. Last hope for the twins is Byron Buxton. Well, the Rays are an out away for winning back to back games for the first time in six series. Hard to believe. First time since a three game sweep in Toronto. Boy, that was a series. You wondered who was going to get anybody on this team out. They swept the Toronto Blue Jays three games to nil and outscored them 31 to 7. They went into that series at Rogers Center at Rogers Center facing Jay Happ and Marcus Stroman the first two games both undefeated at the time and in those two games scored 25 runs. Head. A broken bat single, so Bucks in a two hit day. And he keeps the hopes alive of the Twins. So Colome is still getting loose. As the pitching coach Jim Hickey wants to have a word. That'll be interested to see, uh, you know, how Alex Colome plays this because you know, the, the Twins have no wiggle room. And they've got to continue to get guys on base, and if they do that, all of a sudden you look at the grand slam possibility. You look at, the, you know, uh, Brian Dozier would be the guy coming up in that spot. A lot of power, so Alex colome has got a couple of hitters to get ready. But how quickly do you ramp it up here with two outs? A lot of it will depend. Well, on this at bat, the first couple pitches he and tying run in the hole right now. Especially because you've already used your visit this half. No more ways to delay the game. You're right. Now Buxton into second base. The difference there with two outs and ball one to Nunez, looking for his third hit of the day. Has scored both times he's reached base. Now has 19 hits in his last 10 games. 2 0. This game got derailed for a little bit, a 70 minute rain delay as we were entering the bottom of the sixth inning. 
for some extra time at the clubhouse for Kevin Cash. Paul Molitor, both sides. Or is it a strike to make it two and one? It has been four Rays homers to give Tampa Bay a 7 3 lead. Twins have not scored since the third inning. Now three and one. Now we're on deck. And a hard line out to Souza in right field his last at bat. Now Sturdivant needs just one more out to close the book. Buxton behind him at second. Again the opposite way. Full count. Nice catch with a hat. Now they're giving him away for free today. Twins captain. Put him to use. Just don't lose the coupon on top. <laughs> Very important. Hey, that's not a fashion statement. That is a legitimate no. coupon. There's a reason it's there. Two outs, Buxton at second, three balls and two strikes to Nunez. Entered today with the fifth highest average in the American League. A lot of coupons. Some fans sticking it out even through the rain delay. Even with the Twins losing here inside Target Field. All set to do it again. Again, the payoff pitch. The series will wrap up tomorrow. It'll be Tyler Duffy versus Drew Smiley in the finale of this set. Four game series. If the Rays are not away from taking a two games to one lead. Congress setting up a way for the 3 2. Who's it giving chase? Logan Morrison there as well, and it's into the seats, and another catch in the half. Now, well, got Deeks. Right into the, the paw. That's the place to be sitting right now. I was going to say, a late splurge right there of souvenirs. That's why you stick it out. Twins are an out away from falling to 16 and 39. This time Conger off of the mask. And Nunez just spread of the wealth now. That's why you stick around. And you bring the glove. And you have the rally hat. Got it all. It's all part of the equation. Next pitch will be number 10 coming the way of Nunez. Bucks in the runner at second. And the game continues as Nunez takes ball for a 10 pitch plate appearance. And he keeps the line moving for the Twins. It'll bring in Bauer. Yeah, decision time here for Kevin Cash and no movement yet. This fastball, tough battle both ways, dropping just below the zone, and that's going to be it. So we've got a pitching change two outs, two on.
four Rays homers have given right now the Rays a 7-3 lead, but things all of a sudden getting interesting here in the bottom of the ninth as Alex Colabay, who picked up a 34-pitch five-out save last night, gets called on here with two outs and two on to the bottom of the ninth inning. Well, Kevin Cash would have liked to have avoided this. However, given who's up and the situation, you got to go to him. It's the only move. The potential tying run in the on deck circle and the very dangerous Joe Maurer at the plate. Maurer 0 for 4 lifetime against Colomay. The 0 1. 0 oh 2. As Conger keeps it within an arm's reach. Colomay had never picked up a save at any level in his career until this season. Now he's got 13 on the year. But the depth on that slider. 13 straight for the Rays. He, you know, filling in for Brad Boxberger, who started the season on the disabled list. And really, at the, even at the beginning of the year, Kevin Cash was, would not call him to close him. So he's going to get a lot of those opportunities, but we're going to go kind of by committee. But he has just taken a stranglehold of that job through his performance. On a line and a foul ball. Logan Morrison blew that thing foul. Playing right <laughs> on the line there. <laughs> Just pushing foul. No room to get it by him. You see him right there, and he's actually cheating that way. Pushes it. Double feet foul. Two outs and two on. Colome trying to pick up his 14th save of the season. And saves in back to back nights. Once more, the 0 2. Out to center, and this drops in well in front of Matuk. It brings in Buxton to reach down the single. And the Twins have crept a run closer. Now we're in RBI base hit. His second RBI here today, 7 4. Just playing Pepper out in center, left center field. Documented it all afternoon how good Joe Maurer is going the other way. Look at how it just stays down on that baseball. It's down and away, meant to be down and in. And just slaps it out there, and that gives the Twins this chance. So Dozier now the tie and run. Almost a repeat of what happened last night. There's pitch foul. Well, Dozier having one of his best performances in a while. A couple of hits, two RBIs as well, including an RBI double the opposite way. His first multi hit game since May 10th, a span of 20 games. One big swing ties this up. One and one. How much fatigue do you think right now for Colomay after 34 pitches last night? None. None. No, this is adrenaline. No, I mean, if he's ready to go and he's in there, now he may feel fatigue after this game, certainly tomorrow, but right now, knowing what's at stake, he feels nothing. Jammed him. And Colomay a strike away. Colomay spent some time last year in the rotation. Molitor hoping for a ninth inning comeback. Dozier behind one and two. He is the tie and run. There it goes, and that's your ball game. Colome picks up the save in back-to-back -back games, and the Rays have won back-to-back -back games for the first time, Ryan, in six series. Well, you know, it took a, a late comeback last.